Hello, my name is Kurt Schwer, and this is Research Tools Video 13, Python Part 6, Parsing GPS Data. This is a part of the UNH Center for Coastal and Ocean Mapping Joint Hydrographic Center's uh, class on working with all sorts of data types for science. So let's go ahead and get started and uh, dig into some parsing of actual data. Up till now, we've been building up to the point where we can really use real data but today we're going to give it a go. So let's go ahead and get ourselves some GPS data collected from the roof of Seacomb. So I'm on the Research Tools webpage and I'm going down to Examples. Alright, so here we are Examples. And I've got several log files that I've collected from this sensor. This is an AirMar that we have on the roof. And I'm going to control click on this and we'll do save link as. And we're going to go ahead and save this file. Alright, so now I've got the data downloaded. We're going to go ahead and move tilde slash ccom to our current working directory. And since this is bzip compressed, we're going to uncompress it. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at our data after it's uncompressed. We can do that with the command less. It's pretty safe to look at data even if it happened to be binary. Press tab to complete the file name. So we're going to have, go ahead and hit enter here. And we'll see that we've logged some data. This is a whole day's worth of data. Um, let's see what we've got here. We've got some comments that I wrote in with my log file writer. So we can, we're going to have to ignore those. And we're looking at NEMA data here that comes starts with a dollar sign, contains typically a two-letter talker identifier, in this case a GPS, and then a three-letter or four-letter code saying what that data is actually going to uh, be. So in the case of a GPS, this would be um, a transit log, ZDAs are time fields and our MDAs are some sort of weather. The one we care about is right here, the GPGGA. This is the probably the most common GPS string. And let's see if we can find ourselves some information on this. If we Google for NEMA and GGA, there's a number of links. Uh, I'm going to go for the GPSD documentation. And if we do a control F GGA and control G again until we get to the real documentation. So here we have our GGA string and it goes through and breaks out what each of those things is for. And in here we're going to look at the latitude. We'll also need to look at the north and south. It doesn't actually save the plus or minus in the number. And then the longitude and the east and the west. Now, um, these numbers are a little bit funky, so they're not what we expect in terms of being four digits here and five digits here for the longitude. We'll get into that when we start parsing the data. But let's give it a shot and take a peek at what we have in this data. So we can, we've done a last to see what's in there. I did a Q to quit out of there. We'll do a word count dash L just to see how many lines of text we've got. So it looks like we've got quite a few. We've got 88, 881,000 lines, which is quite a few. We can also do, so if we do a head dash 15, of our file, take a quick peek. If we want to break out and see what all messages we've gotten, we can do something like uh, grep. And I want to search for a dollar sign, so slash dollar. And that's going to get rid of comments and other junk that we don't want. So ccom, and we'll pipe that to cut. And we're going to use the delimiter comma here, so dash D comma, and we're going to use the first field, so we want to grab the first thing before the comma, and unfortunately cut counts from one unlike Python, so remember we got to use one for the first field. We'll do pipe that to head to see if we've got it right, 
and it looks like we're getting very nicely our fields. Now we can pipe, rather than to head, we can pipe that to sort-u for unique, and it's going to take all of that and co collapse it down to the unique, unique set of messages. So let's give that a go, let it run for a second here while it grinds through all those data. And you can see here, this is our list of NEMA messages that we have. So that's very nice. Uh, one, the one we actually care about, again, remember, is the GPGGA. So let's try and see how many of those we have, GPGGA. And we'll pipe that to word count dash L to count the number of lines. And we have a much more manageable 68,000. So let's go ahead and work on some Python code to parse that. So let me hide that. And we'll start IPython dash dash PyLab to allow plotting. Press enter. And we're now ready to start looking at our file. So what we can do is we can start to create some scripts. I'm going to open up, I have Emacs here. We'll go into video 13. So there's our directory with that. And we'll say wx1.py will be our first script. So that was control x, control f to open. Press enter. We have a new file. So pound bang user bin env python for our typical first line of python. And let's go ahead and open the file and just loop through the data. So we'll say for line in open. And let's see what our file is. Here we've got our file, so I'll copy this. Edit, copy, control Y in here to paste. And then we can say um, print line. We don't really want to do that. But what we can do, that'll be our first uh, loop through it. We're just going to type pass. This is the no operation in Python. It's just a placeholder when you don't have anything that you want to have in there. So we'll say run wx1, and it runs pretty quick. Let's actually have it count the lines. So we'll say total lines equals zero. And every time we hit a line, why don't we add one to that? So total line, well, Make sure we don't get a typo here, lines. And remember that plus equals adds uh, something after, that comes after the equal sign to the variable. So it's sort of an incrementer that keeps adding it. So we're just going to add one each time through. We don't need our pass anymore, so control K is to kill that. And we can print total lines colon and then total lines. Save it, control X, control S, and let's rerun it. So it zips right through and we get our 88, 888,000 lines or 881. And what we need to do now is take a look to see if we can only look for the GGA line. So let's see if there's an easy way to do that in Python. So we'll do Remember that bang will let you run any shell command. So we'll say head ccom. Now tab also works very nicely in here. So we'll do bang head. And maybe we want a few more lines than that. We'll say dash 15. And so if we see we have our GPGGA. So let's go ahead and create, let's do edit copy. And then we'll say a test line. So we're just going to create ourselves some test data, edit, paste. So now we have one line that we can work with. And we can say line and get our line back. And we can try out and see if we can find out if we can test for something in that. So we've seen this before in class. So GGA, we can say, is GGA in line? It's true if we want to try something else like the MWD string. That's not in there. And if we had junk, so let's go grab a junky one that we don't want. We'll copy this guy, edit, copy, edit, paste. We can say is GGA in junk? Nope. 
uh, is MWD in junk, yes. So now we have a nice test to see if something's got a GGA in that line. So what we can do is we can say if GGA not in line. Now this flips the sense of what's going on here, so let's try that. So we'll say GGA in line. Yes, if we say not in line, it's false. And we can say junk. And anytime that we don't have GGA in a line, that will return true. So let's use that. And we'll use that continue that we talked about briefly before. So when you get here, this will be true when there's no GGA. We'll go into this, continue, we'll jump up to this for loop and skip any code that we have afterwards. So what we'll do is we'll say total GGA equals zero. We'll have another little, a little counter. And we can say total GGA plus equals one because if we haven't continued, then we do have a GGA. So let's save that. And let's give that a try. So run WX1. And I have my first bug. I forgot to actually add another print line. So print total GGA total GGA. So now we can go ahead and run that. And now we have our total lines and our total GGA. Very nice. So that's the beginning of parsing our data. So we've now been able to separate out the GG line, GGA GPS lines from everything else. We need to start being able to parse it. So remember that we, if we type whose, we get all of our stuff. If we say line, uh, apparently our line lost what we wanted. So we can do a reverse search, control R for line search back through it, keep hitting control R to get back to your previous commands. And this is the line that I actually wanted to reset it to. So we'll hit enter and we'll rerun that and type whose. And now our line actually has data in it that we want. So the way we can play with line, hit enter just to see line, is it's broken up by commas. So here is one of our fields that we care about. That's our latitude. And then the the north component of our latitude, and here's our longitude and its west. Notice that typically in the United States our longitudes are minus, but here they've written it as west, so we're going to have to combine that together. So we can split this apart on commas, and that will give us a big leg up in terms of working with this data. And so you can see this is field 0, field 1, field 2. So our latitude is actually going to be field 2. So field 2, oops, fields with a plural. And you actually have to save it to the variable first. So fields equals line dot split and comma. So if we do who, whose. Now we have fields, so this is our list of all sorts of stuff. And we can say fields 2 and that's our latitude. So this is just a string though. We still need to work with this to make it into a number that's a decimal degrees. And our first problem is that here we've got 43 is our integer portion of our latitude, but they've gone and they've uh, split that off kind of funny. So what we can do is we can say fields sub two, and we can take just the first two characters, press enter, and that gives us just our 43. Now we want to convert that to a number, so we say int, and that gives us our first component. Now we have to deal with the second part, and I'm just going to go ahead and tell you because it's not obvious in their documentation, and you don't probably want to spend the several hundred dollars for the NEMA documentation. But if you read their documentation, it's not clear that this is actually degree, decimal degrees, but it actually it is. So we'll go ahead and we'll turn that into a number that we can use. So we'll start off with fields to, and since we're starting right here, this is going to start from two and go on. So we'll say two colon, and that gives us the rest. So now we can say float because we actually want to keep the decimal portion of that. 
and that gives us the decimal degrees and if we divide that by 60 that will give us the actual uh, or sorry this is the decimal minutes right here that we've got and we need to convert that to degrees divide by 60 press enter and that will be the part that we need to add together so let's go ahead and combine our two portions so we have the 29 one up here so we'll say fields 2, we want the integer, and whoops, we'll add to that this part right here, which is that. And that right there is our latitude. A little complicated, but it does work. So let's go ahead and start adding that into our script over on the right that we're going to want to have. So as we loop through, Let's go ahead and say fields equals line dot split. Get those fields like we wanted. And now we can say edit copy. And we'll go ahead and yank. And let's save that to y, since remember that latitude is y. So when mathematically you'll say x, y, but people often say lat come along, and you'll see that fairly frequently in data. Now the next thing, if we type fields, remember that we have to look at this north-south to see if we're in the northern hemisphere or southern hemisphere and change the sign of our latitude. So we can say if fields 3, so that's the next one, equals south then we're going to want to make the sign change to be the opposite so we can say y equals minus y and that'll flip it to be a negative so that's our latitude and let's try a few of those and i'm going to use a quick trick up here if we say enumerate what that will do is every time we go through a line it will return another variable that is the line number to go with it so line num and we can say if line num greater than, oh, we'll just pick something like 50. And we'll say break. Now break is a little bit different than continue. So continue jumps up to the top when it gets called. Break will actually get out of the for loop and get down to the bottom and get out of it. So we'll say if line number is greater than 50, we'll call break and that will drop us to the bottom down here past our code and then we'll go into our little print section at the bottom. So let's just go ahead and see if we can run this. We'll find out if we have any bugs. So run wx1.py and it looks like it goes okay. And notice now here we've only gone through uh, 51 lines and um, four GGAs. But let's go ahead and print out the Y make sure it's working. So we'll say print Y, give ourselves a good test, and we'll go ahead and run that again. And you'll see our Y starting to print out here very nicely. So now we need to do the same thing for our latitude, so our longitude that we did with our latitude, so field, plural, fields. And so this was field two, and that was field three, and field four. Let's see if I've got that right. Fields four. And we'll need to split this up again, and this time we have 070 is our latitude, if I can highlight the right text. There we go. So we can say colon 2, so 0, 1, 2, and I probably want 3. There we go. Remember to go one past the one that you want, and we can say integer of that, and that will give us 70. And we can do the same thing with the trailing portion, so fields for and we can go from th the third position so skip 0 1 2 and go to the end by leaving out what's in here after the colon press enter so there's the rest of that control a to go back to the beginning type float now we have a floating point number and we need to convert that from decimal minutes into degrees so we divide by 60 so that's the trailing component, and now we need to combine the two together. 
So I hit up arrow to get that one, control A to get the beginning. We'll go grab this guy, edit, copy, edit, paste, add the two together, and there we've got our latitude or our longitude. So we're going to go ahead and copy this, edit, copy, looks pretty good. And we'll go ahead and type x equals and then control y to paste. There we go, looks pretty good. Now remember we also have to worry about east and west here because we don't have the right sign. So we'll go ahead and say if fields and the next one will be number 5 equals west, then we'll say x equals negative x. Let's get rid of this print in here, we don't really want that and we'll print print x comma y. That looks pretty good to me. Let's give it a shot and see if we get some nice coordinates back. And we'll say sometimes hitting up arrow isn't the most efficient, but run and we've now got x and y. And you could go verify that, plop it into Google Earth or some tool like that or into a map tool, and you'll see that this is the actual location of the CECOM building. So that's pretty nice. We've got ourselves a good script to parse the data. And with that, let's go ahead and write this to a new file, and we'll go ahead and work on plotting. So Control X, W is right. So Control X, Control W, sorry. And that, we'll write that to WX2. And what we want to do now is to convert this into something that we can actually use as a function to get the data back into IPython over here so that we can use it. So let's clean this up. We don't really need our total line, so let's, let's get rid of that. We're not going to want to keep with just a few lines, so we'll get rid of this guy. We're not going to count the lines. We are going to skip the GGA, and we're not going to count them. We'll get rid of our comment, we don't really need that. And we don't want our print, nor do we need to print the total. So now we've got ourselves a little bit simpler code to work with, and we want to turn this into a function that will return two lists. And those lists will each be the x and the y. So let's go ahead and create a function. So we'll say def load gga file name. So that's our new function. We could put a doc string here and it says parse NEMA GGA GPS positions. Okay, looks good. And now we need to indent this section right here. And Python has some, or uh, sorry, Emacs has some nice ways to do that. So over here we have shift region left and right. So control C and then greater than will scoot it to the right. We'll pick that. And now it's indented four spaces to the right. Makes our life a lot easier, not having to indent everything. And let's create ourselves two arrays. So we'll say, or lists. So we'll say x list, just to call it something different than x. And we'll make it empty, nothing in there. Y list. And what we're going to do is each time through this for loop, we're going to go ahead and append that onto the end so that we save them. So we'll say, Okay, let's see, x list dot append, uh, and then we'll append the x on there, and y list append y. Save that, and I definitely have some bugs running around here. One is we've hard coded our file name, so we're gonna delete this, so control w, and we'll say file name. And so now we have a little bit more flexible function and let's give it a shot and see what happens. So we'll go over here and we'll say import wx2 and import okay, that's pretty nice. So wx2 period press tab, see what we've got. We've got a function called load gga. Let's ask for some help. Parse nema, okay, it looks pretty good. Let's see if we can call it. And if we then single quote and seek com press tab to complete and let's see if this works and it's reading away and nothing happens so if we do whose uh, nothing's changed we haven't loaded our data what could be wrong 
Well, with functions, if you don't actually pass anything back in a return, anything that's in the function exists only while that function's running. So once you come into this function, this x list and y list will, will be created here, and when we drop off the bottom, they'll get deleted and they'll be gone. They only exist inside of this function. They're called local variables. So we need to return them back so that we can use them. So we can say return x list comma y list. Python is pretty clever. If you pass back a list of things, it'll come back and be turned into a list automatically. And if you have multiple variables that you're assigning it to, as long as they're the same number of things, they'll assign very nicely. So we can say, now remember it's reload now that we have this, so wx2. So now we've reloaded that new code that we've saved over here. So make sure that there's no stars in here when you're doing that. And we'll go ahead and say wx2. Actually, you know what? We'll just hit the up arrow and get there. And press enter. It loads the data. And we got not what we wanted back. We just got two items. And what happened here? X list, Y list. Hmm. So we'll say print length x list. We'll see how big this is. Let's give it a shot. We're going to do some debugging here. I am not actually sure what's wrong. So we'll do reload and we'll rerun it. And it didn't append anything it looks like. So x list append, y list append. What could it be doing wrong? x list dot append x. And if you notice here, I've now spotted my bug. I come through the loop and I jump back up there and I didn't actually save it. We need to actually indent this into that block. So I can hit tab and the indenting will match. Backspace will usually drop through the different indentations. So that's, I was hitting backspace there. So let's try this again and we're going to kill that since I think this will work. And we'll reload it and try again. So that was a little lesson in debugging. So we load the data wait, 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 it's working, and whoa, look at that, that's a lot of data. So hopefully that will finish sometime soon. As we wait for it to go scrolling by way too fast. Okay, so we want to save that into two variables, so we'll save it into x comma y. Now remember, x comma y here has absolutely nothing to do with x, y over here. This is inside of a function and this is somewhere else, so they're, they're not related. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And we can print, well, let's just do the length of x and see what we got. Looks pretty good, print x. And there's a lot of stuff going by on the screen. Not very useful to look at data like that. Perhaps it'd be better to plot them. So let's say plot x comma y. Oh, look at that. Here is our GPS data. Now our coordinates aren't very useful, but this shows you the GPS wander over a day for our station. So that actually can tell us something about the accuracy of our GPS at any one time, and we can also use that to get a very accurate estimate of the actual location of our GPS as mounted on the roof of our building. So that's pretty handy, and we can also do some quick checks. We can say average of x and average of y. And that's now a pretty good estimate of the location of our weather sensor on the roof of the building. So that's it for this time. And next time we'll go into hopefully some projection work and we'll do some distances and calculations with this GPS data. And that's your first taste of really parsing data. And uh, there's lots of different variations on that and we'll see a good number of them, but hopefully this will get you started.